Let us understand why logging into SSH using key pairs uh, is more secure than using even strong passwords. In a previous video, whose link I'll put in the description of this one, uh, I show how using, for example, Putty as the client, uh, I can log in into a cloud resource by just specifying the user ID and then Putty does the negotiation with the private key, which we're going to kind of describe right now uh, to understand why that is actually uh, very secure. The first thing that you do, you generate a, a key pair, a public and private key. And you know from the other videos that we've done in cryptography, you know that what you encrypt with the public key you can only decrypt with the corresponding private key and vice versa. You must protect that uh, private key user either with a hardware security module or with uh, passphrases. So every time that you want to use the private key stored in your uh, system, you need to provide a passphrase. It's equivalent to a password to generate that. And obviously when you create a public private key, you need to provide some entropy. In the case of PuTTY, you provide that entropy by moving the mouse around. Now you have your private key pair. Now at, when you are registering your service in the cloud, what you provide are basically two things. A user ID that has to be unique, of course, and a public key that you provide at that time, additional considerations uh, for, for security. You might be limited to a CDAT ranges that you can only log in from some certain IP. There might be uh, multi-factor authentication, you know, different things to enhance the security of these. And, and this is required due to the public nature. There's no VPN really on the cloud. There are some things that mimic the VPN, but uh, Basically, you need to assume that everything that is on the cloud has a URL and, and, and requires additional security. Now, okay, so you provide that user ID and that public key at uh, registration. And when you are going to log in, again, if you are initiating the SSH session from, from a browser, you need to make sure that you go to the to, uh, under a good SSL session to uh, mitigate man in the middle type of attacks. Uh, but uh, in the case of PuTTY, you go uh, uh, straight to it. So when you provide that user ID, the cloud entity generates what is called a nonce. And that stands for a number use one. It's a it's a random, pseudo random number. It's uh, large and complex. Uh, but that, that's all what it is. It, it, it's a number use one. And then that nonce, which is a secret to the cloud provider, it, it, it goes ahead and encrypts it using the public key that you provide at registration time and sends that to the entity who wants to initiate a secure SSA session. Well, what the entity at this end does it uses, extracts the private key uh, uh, from the HSM or a passphrase or whatever mechanism is. So actually, on the HSM, you don't extract the key. You actually send what you want it to encrypt, and then you get the result back. That's why what is called the hardware security module. So the private key is uh, not accessible outside that module. But uh, you get the point. So the, the idea is, okay, prove to me that you have that uh, private key that matches the public key that you put on the registration. And when the entity that wants to initiate the SSA session uh, to log in does is decrypted using the private key and then you are right to the very same nonce that the cloud entity generated and then you send that back. And also you have having here the rest of the you know, primitives to generate the symmetric key that is going to be used for encrypting everything during the SSS session. And again, there are other 
uh, videos in this uh, in the playlist that accompanies uh, this uh, this particular one that shows how uh, Diffie Hellman and all those uh, things uh, are used for generating that uh, symmetric key starting with asymmetric key which is the public Piper key pair. I hope that this gives you an idea of why uh, logging into cloud resources with uh, uh, key pairs is actually far more secure than uh, even a strong password. And But nevertheless always think of using multi-factor authentication, specific CDAP ranges and other uh, protection mechanisms.